Hello and welcome to an instalment of Mantis Hacks. This week I am going to be looking at doing a uh, hydraulic pump upgrade. Uh, so the last time I ran the pump for a, quite a long period of time and I was testing the grippers behind me uh, to open an Easter egg. Uh, anyway, the pump was overheating a little bit. Well, it didn't quite overheat but it was getting quite hot and I probably couldn't have run it for too much longer. Uh, now when I originally put this pump together I did say that I might need some active cooling because it's a very small tank so there isn't much dwell time for the oil. Uh, really this type of pump isn't meant to be used continuously. Um, so what I'm going to do is install a cooler. So this is a cooler made for cars, basically the oil cooler on a car if you want to add one. And this particular unit cost about £25 off of eBay. And my idea is that I had these uh, mains powered fans here, I've got two of these, uh, and they're about the same size as the cooler, so the theory is I'm going to fit them something like that, uh, and find somewhere for it to go on the pump, and then reroute the return line, um, which is currently going through the filter, but I'll reroute it back through the uh, cooler, and then back through the filter and into the tank. Uh, and then the other thing I'm probably going to do is fit one of these. This is a little uh, temperature switch and this switch comes on at 40 degrees plus or minus 5, so anywhere between 35 and 45 degrees. So I'll probably attach that on the hot side of the cooler um, so the fans aren't running continuously. They'll only run when the oil is up, oil is up to temperature. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is mount these fans tight up against the uh, cooler face to force air through it. And the simplest way I can see to do that pretty quickly is that there's a little bit of space in between the um, cooler there, in between these uh, channels. And I could get some M3 studding through there and mount the fans directly on. And unfortunately, I don't have any M3 studding. Uh, so for this temporary test, I'm actually going to cable tie the fans on through those same fixing holes. Uh, now what I have had to do, this is a little bit cavalier I have to admit, but uh, basically where the other point where the fan goes through, I've pushed a screwdriver through the fins, so these are just the cooling fins, the oil channels are the, the larger stripes you see down here. So I've pushed a screwdriver through in a couple of places, so there's enough room for the M3 studding when I get it. Uh, but like I say, for now I'm just going to cable tie these in place. I'm going to wire up the fans in between like that, so the, the electrics will be in the middle. Uh, and then at some point I've got to attach this to the hot side of the fan and also wire that through to the fan electrics. Okay, that's that bit uh, done. So my very, my very cavalier attachment of cable tying the uh, fans onto the grill, onto the uh, radiator. Um, so and I've wired up through here. So I've got my mains power coming in, and uh, I've got the live terminal going to each fan, and then I've got the neutral going through the uh, temperature controlled switch. And I've got my earths connected on both sides. So this end of the uh, mains cable I'll have to wire into my direct online starter, which I'll do in a minute. Uh, now the only other thing I need to do just for the purpose of test is mount a couple of these brackets. Um, I could find much better ones of these actually, sort of squarer ones, but I had these uh, in the workshop here. So I'll just mount these up so I can mount the fan. I'm going to mount it vertically like this. Uh, and then I'll look at plumbing in the hydraulic hoses. As far as mounting the oil cooler, the best solution I've found is uh, I've basically removed the direct online starter from here. This was originally mounted on a bracket that uh, came with the, um, the pump. Uh, and I'm going to move the direct online starter onto here, like that. And then the cooler. I'm going to mount on the side here because um, I want air to 
plenty of room behind here so air can pass freely out and obviously I need plenty of room in front so I don't want to mount this too close in like this because it's going to obstruct the cooler a little bit um, of course I'll get some secondary cooling on the motor as well although it does have its own cooling fan on the back there uh, and then I've got to route the um, the feed so here's the return line here going into the filter uh, so what I'll probably do is I'm going to take the return line from here down into the bottom of the cooler and then take the output of the cooler back into the filter like that um, I'm not sure what hydraulic hose I have available to do that I've got a few bits and pieces here um, but I'll get this mounted up and then uh, and then take a look Okay, so that's kind of finished. Um, I mean, obviously I've got to strengthen this bracket system up because it's still only held on with those temporary brackets. And I want to um, attach the fans properly with that M3 studding. Uh, but what I've done is I've, um, I've powered the fans through the direct online starter. Um, so I've added a, a knocked out another hole on the back of the starter and fed the cable through there. Um, I still want to tidy that up a little bit really and I need to make um, a fan plate on here for a finger guard so you can't put your fingers into the fans. Uh, and then what I've had to do is I've completely rerouted the oil filter so it was sat over the back here originally. Um, and I've come off the output of the um, fan, of the uh, cooler here, uh, through the filter and then back to the return line. Uh, and obviously this is the original line that was going into the uh, straight into the filter which now goes to the bottom of the cooler um, and at the moment my little temperature sensor uh, I didn't couldn't find any glue I don't know why all my glues disappeared but um, that needs kind of bonding in place on the hot side of the cooler there uh, at the moment it's just taped on all right I'm back and uh, pretty much ready to do this test I've got my um, infrared thermal probe which isn't ideal but will do for this purpose. Um, I also noticed that one of these fans, this one here, was installed back to front so one was pulling air that way and the other was pushing air this way so that was useless so I'll flip that round. Um, I'm just going to remake the brackets holding the cooler on quickly because it is a little bit flimsy at the moment uh, and then we'll run the test. <laughs> So I've just made up these uh, brackets for the cooler, something a little bit more substantial. Out yeah, of some uh, scrap steel that I had around, so I'm just going to install these on both sides. Right, I'm ready to run these tests now. So what I'm going to do is um, start the pump up and uh, basically wait until it's up to temperature and these fans kick in, at which point I'll know what temperature this switch is working at, the thermal switch. Uh, and then I'm going to just take readings at the hot input uh, and the, the cool output of the cooler. And from those two readings there should be a differential in temperature uh, and I should be able to work out how many kilowatts the system is dissipating. Uh, so there will be some heat dissipation from the surface area of the tank as well, we can also factor that in. Um, but otherwise this is pretty much ready to go. The uh, starting temperature is about 15 degrees centigrade, um, so let's go. So when you just switch the pump on, you can already see that the temperature into the cooler is at 26, 27 degrees. And that's just basically all the energy is being converted into heat. Because nothing's being used by the system, so it's all just being converted to heat straight into the bottom of the cooler. Okay, so the fans have just kicked in. And it was at about 44 degrees. And currently I'm getting a cooling capacity, so I've got 40.8 in the output and 44 in the input. So now I've finished the test, uh, basically the results are pretty good. The, uh, the tank took about 15-20 uh, minutes to get up to temperature and it got up to about 41 degrees. Uh, but the hot inlet at that point was at about 44 degrees and the fans kicked in then. 
uh, and then there was about a differential of between three and four degrees across the cooler. Right, let's do some maths to work out how much heat we're actually dissipating. Um, so we'll start with the tank, and to work out that we take the surface area of the tank, multiply by the difference between ambient temperature and tank temperature, and multiply by 0 0.016. Uh, so I had a 0.17 meter square surface area, and about a 21 degree differential, so that uh, works out about 57 watts of heat dissipation. And then for the cooler, uh, I'm taking the inlet temperature and the outlet temperature, the differential between the two, which I've averaged to about 3.5 degrees C. I multiply that by the flow rate, which is 4.2 litres per minute, and I multiply that by 0 0.03, and that gives me a heat dissipation of about 440 watts. So the two combined gives nearly 500 watts of heat dissipation, and that's approximately what we've going into the system, is about 500 watts of power. Um, so I think I can call that a very successful upgrade. Well, I think that's it for this hydraulic upgrade instalment. Uh, next up, I think I need to try and get this gripper assembly attached to the um, tilt and rotate mechanism and get the tilt and rotate mechanism working in closed loop. To do that, I might actually uh, create an Arduino shield um, so I can plug in one channel per shield and then plug them all into an Arduino uh, so I can get all three axes running together. Um, also, I'm starting to build giant Lego for another project, which could be quite good fun. Uh, do remember to uh, subscribe and check out the Facebook page, which is facebook.com forward slash mantis robot. Ah, yes, and if my maths is wrong, do feel free to correct me in the comments below.